Hey everyone, Gamer Guide here. And you know, the Sonic IDW comics have had a very successful run thus far. You know, they're already on issue 20. They're about to have issue 21 later this month. Can't wait for that in the new arc. So in this video, I wanted to talk about the the many Easter eggs and references throughout the series, at least the first 12 issues of the comic. So yeah, let's talk about that. There's 40 Easter eggs and references I found just going through the first 12 issues of the IDW comic. So let's talk about them. All right, so number one, the first one. Sonic IDW issue number one has the most alternate covers, 17 in total. The highest amount of variant covers produced for any Sonic related comic. So this surpasses Sonic Universe number 75, which had a total of eight variant covers. Number two, Sonic the Hedgehog issue one is the best selling regular single issue of a North American Sonic comic. Basically, it sold about 25,000 copies, whereas the previous record holder was Archie Sonic Boom, issue number one, which sold around 17,000 copies. Also, all the militia members featured are based on species available for avatar creation in um, Sonic Forces, and the gloves and shoes worn by the town's militia are the standard uniform pieces worn by the Resistance's soldiers in Sonic Forces. Number four, this issue was nominated for Comic Book of the Year. $3.99 or under in the 2018 Diamond Gem Awards. Number five, in issue two, when Amy assumes Sonic will be leaving the village after the invasion, Sonic tells her he's living by my way, my own way. These words are loosely derived from the lyrics of Sonic's theme song, It Doesn't Matter, from Sonic Adventure. Number six, Adam Bryce Thomas made a sketch of the villager who appears on cover B and who alerted Sonic and Amy of the incoming Badnik Forest naming her Lanolin. Lanolin is a sheep and a recurring background character throughout the series. The definition of her name Lanolin is actually a fatty substance found naturally on sheep's wool. Number 7. Speaking of cover B, did you know that it uses the egg pond Sonic Forces design even though IDW does not have access to them? This explains why they continue using the standard orange egg ponds instead. Number 8. Knuckles making his IDW debut in Sonic the Hedgehog number 3 and teaming up with Sonic is a reference to Sonic 3 and Knuckles. In fact, all the characters' appearances in the first three issues are the order of their appearance in the Sonic games. Tails is in issue 1 because he was in Sonic 2. Amy is in issue 2 because she was in Sonic CD, which came out before 3 and Knuckles. Number 9. In issue number 3, Jennifer Hernandez accidentally drew the Sonic Forces designs for the egg ponds in the issue as it had been previously stated by Ian Flynn that they did not have access to these designs. Number 10, Jennifer Hernandez's original characters make cameos throughout the issue. The dog Gatekeeper featured heavily in this issue was based on Hernandez's own dog. Jade and Crystal the Cat are seen serving rough and tumble. Additionally, Ruby Ringtail, Emerald the Iguana, and Sapphire Flutterby are seen with the rest of the townsfolk. Hernandez has drawn her characters in official Sonic media before, with Crystal being seen in issue 260 and Jade and Emerald seen in issue 282 of the Sonic the Hedgehog comic series published by Archie Comics. Number 11. The hover wispon that appears on this story's second page is mistakenly colored red instead of green. Number 12. The stone pavement on page 11 features three circular shaped designs. It was revealed by Evan Stanley that it is the logo of her animation and illustration student group that she was a member of during her time in college. Number 13. The name icons for the characters that appear in this issue are drawn in the same style as the one used for Sonic's name on his promotional artwork for Sonic Adventure. Number 14. The color scheme of Dr. Eggman's work clothes is based on an early artwork of him for the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Number 15, Eggman's quote, but I'm just your friendly neighborhood handyman, is a reference to the line often used to describe the Marvel comic superhero Spider-Man. Now that one's pretty cool. Number 16, the posing that Sonic and Shadow are in on cover A of this issue is a callback to a panel from Sonic Universe number 54 in which Sonic and Metal Sonic are charging at each other, which in fact is a callback to Sonic CD's promotional artwork of Sonic and Metal Sonic. Number 17, Tracy Yardley based the cover B on the official poster for the 1997 movie Face Off, featuring John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Number 18, the pose Sonic performs as he is in free fall down to the Egg Fleet battleship is similar to the one he performs in Sonic Lost World and Sonic Forces when the player idles during free fall sections. It's basically his idle animation. 
Number 19. Sonic's line, I never fear the fall, in issue 7, is derived from the lyric, Never fear the fall, in the song His World from Sonic the Hedgehog or Sonic 06. Number 20. The flower that appears in Resistance HQ also appears on the title screen for Sonic Forces after completing the main story. Number 21. The button showcase on the bottom of cover A holds three references to consoles released by Sega. The buttons of the right side are a reference to the Sega Genesis, whose controller has the same button layout and colors. The buttons of the left side are a reference to the Sega Dreamcast, whose controller possesses the same button layout and colors. And the red button seen on the center panel is a reference to the start button on the Sega Saturn controller. Number 22. Issue 8 is the first comic issue in the history of the Sonic franchise in which profanity is used, as Silver exclaimed, Oh crap! Number 23. E107 Theta was set to appear in the Archie comics Sonic the Hedgehog number 258, but was replaced with E106 Ada to avoid legal issues due to its previous mention in the Light Mobius arc by Ken Penders. Number 24. The giant Eggman statue that appears on Angel Island Issue 9 resembles a pose from one of Dr. Eggman's artworks from Sonic Adventure 2. Number 25. Shadow leaning against boxes in Resistance HQ is a nod to him doing the same thing in Sonic Forces. Number 26. Sonic's Extreme Gear, the Blue Star, takes his design after its Sonic Riders appearance, while Knuckles' Extreme Gear, the Red Rock, takes his design after its Sonic Free Riders appearance. Number 27. Before jumping from the battleship, Blaze has to remind herself not to think of how high up she is. This is a callback to her acrophobia, which she displayed in Sonic Rush and Sonic Rush Adventure, her fear of heights. Number 28. The pose assumed by Burning Blaze after transforming is similar to the one that appears on the regular cover for Sonic Universe issue 58. Number 29. The way Charmy B carries his teammates away from the battleship's crash landing is similar to how he would carry his teammates in Sonic Heroes when his team was in flight formation. Number 30. When the heroes begin their attack, one of the egg ponds shows an exclamation point inside of a speech bubble. This is a reference to the same speech bubbles with exclamation points inside of them that the enemies in Sonic Heroes show when they notice the playable characters. Number 31. Neo Metal Sonic's lines all become a black mark on the floor and come. Show Me What You're Made Of are references to the lyrics of the song What I'm Made Of that plays during the battle with Metal Overlord and Sonic Heroes. Number 32, the lyrics for this song Dr. Eggman sings in this issue is a parody of some of the lyrics in the song Eggman from Sonic Adventure 2. Number 33, the bombs that Rouge uses in this issue are based on the bombs her video game counterpart uses in the Rouge Challenge Act in the console and PC versions of Sonic Generations. Number 34, the R.I. cover pays homage to the opening title screen for Sonic and Knuckles. Number 35. At the bottom left-hand corner of cover B, the text Sonic Shadow and Knuckles can be seen. This is a reference to the N. Knuckles meme used among fans that stemmed from the video game Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles. Number 36. The pose that Sonic and Shadow assume on the R.I. cover is similar to the one they assume in the introduction video of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Number 37. Rouge mentioning that Shadow is gone, never to look back again, may be a reference to the song Never Turn Back from the Shadow the Hedgehog video game. You know, they use a lot of lyrics for the dialogue in this series. Number 38. On page 8, Tumble can be seen making a circle shape with his left hand, which is a nod to the circle game. Number 39. Sonic saying that Silver can return to the future, however he does it, is a reference to the fact that it is never explained how Silver manages to time travel in the Sonic series other than Sonic 06. And number 40. When Eggman decides to move on with a new plan, he says, it's time for a change of pace. This is a reference to the Egg Dragoon boss from Sonic Generations. In this boss battle, Eggman says, time for a change of pace, every time he switches to a new attack mode. Alright guys, well that wraps it up for the Easter eggs and references of the Sonic IDW comics. So, what did you think about this? Let me know down in the comments below. Remember to smash the like button, subscribe, all that good stuff, hit the bell button. And uh, let me know if you like this, because if you do, I will definitely do a second part to this video when uh, we conclude the Metal Virus Saga. So that will be like by the end of the year. I definitely enjoy doing this, so uh, be sure to let me know and give me some feedback. Alright guys, that wraps it up. So let me know also if there's any other things I missed, any type of references or easter eggs in the IDW comics I may have overlooked. But alright, take care and until next time, swag out.